at what age do you think a woman is the most attractive? Um, from my for, experience, for, for men, for uh, for men, yeah. Um, I would fun? say mid thirties, thirty four. Okay. 34, yes. 37. Finally. Okay. Yeah. You think mid 30s? <laughs> yep. Um, and then do mm-hmm. you think she has the highest likelihood of landing her guy in this age range? I'd like to think so. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You'd mm-hmm. like to think so. All right. Well, yeah. So, well, it um, did for me. <laughs> but I mean, you're wise. You're wiser. <laughs> you're, so, you're wiser. You've been through stuff. Rush, <laughs> and and stuff kids. Okay. Okay. But do they yeah. want someone who's older and been through stuff? That's a, been that's through a stuff? good yeah. point. All right. So let me ask you this then, ladies. Do you think men value experience the same way that women value experience? So in other words, women typically value men that have experience and competency. Do you think men value that too? We'll start here. Yes or no, simple for you. Do I think, you guys said experience. All right, say that one more time. Okay. Women value competence and experience in men. Mm-hmm. Would it be fair to say that all of you agree? You yeah. want a guy that understands how things work? A leader, confidence. Right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Do you think men value that back in exchange to the same degree as women? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Well, you a boss, babe, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're independent. <laughs> I like it. Okay. What about you? Yes. You think yes as well? 100%. Wow. Okay. Wow. No. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yes. Okay. Yes, unless you want an airhead. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. For real, like yeah. it's always the extremes. Yeah. Either yeah. airhead, yeah. 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 independent. Again, I'm asking you, what do you think the men want, not what you want? No, I said like yeah. So yeah. what do you think the men? Bad. What do you think men value it? Oh, they do. Okay. The, they what kind of experience are we talking about, though? Like life experience or well, what comes Logan life? Dylan? I mean, I mean, the experience. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. Well, that's yeah. not true. Don't people say like men need to have their share fair of fun before they like settle down and stuff? Yeah, men, men don't want that. They but, they want wait, you to be like. You're saying do men need to have their share fair of fun? You said or women? Yeah, men. men. Well, men well, always say though. Yeah. I know we're different, but I'm asking you, like men, like they'd rather have. A younger woman because obviously she's less experienced oh. but men are so much more mm-hmm. likely to be known as someone that needs to have their share fair of experience before they settle down and have a family but isn't it funny that women prefer, prefer older men that are more mature that no. have more experience yeah you know? we do but i don't i do, do personally but do, but do men want the same thing i don't know no well answer. she said yes by her answer yeah, yes. <laughs> um, okay. so even though the question she just asked <laughs> it was a different thought process I would say yes. Bruh. Yeah, you, you think, like, okay, you think men value experience and competency in women's Holy the same thing? Yes. Wow. Okay. What about you? Um, I don't think it's important really at all. Okay. Um, I mean, if she has like a tremendous amount of life experience, like I feel like that might even be off putting. Like I feel okay. like a lot of men like want like younger, like uncorrupted women. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, per se. <laughs> awesome <laughs> word choice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I mean, because like in a relationship, like I mean, at least in, uh, in my opinion, you know, you want the man to to be the leader, right? In order for that to happen, he has to have the experience. Like, I am not going to lead in a relationship, so it doesn't really matter the experience I have. Like, you know, Ooh. I would, like, you know, trust the man to be the leader, and then he would use his experience to, you know, go wherever. Perfect. You're in a very masculine environment in the military where there is a chain of command, there is a order of hierarchy, etc. In general... Right. Not all the time, but in general, per people of higher stature within the military typically have more competence, more experience. They have something that got them and elevated them to that position, which allows them to command authority, wear a certain title or have a certain title where their subordinates underneath them. Wouldn't it be fair to say that dynamic is very important between men and women? Absolutely. There needs to be that hierarchy. Mm-hmm. I okay. So. Uh, Question. Do you watch the show? I do like the show. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Small woman. woman. Uh, cool. So, okay. So I asked the three-part question here because I really wanted to get the lady's thought process on this without me influencing it. So I asked, first I asked, what matters more? Or, well, the super chat, shout out to you. Who, who, that was a, was a fantastic question that started this conversation. Um, Bender, the, the, offender, offender. Bender, the offender. He goes, um, should women prioritize career or a family between 21 to 27? Most of you said career, and you guys gave reasons for such as like, you know, being experienced, uh, loving yourself, understanding yourself, uh, not being childish because you're still a baby, having a backup, being an independent, wrote down a bunch of your answers. And then I asked, when do you think a woman has the highest likelihood of actually securing a man? Some of you said 18 to 24, etc. 
but most of you actually gave older ages. And then one of you switched it up and went back to 22 and I asked you. And then, uh, <laughs> and then when I asked, do men value competency at the same level? Most of you actually said yes in experience. So this is very alarming to me. <laughs> because, Why we all have like almost the same thought process? Uh, for two reasons, this is alarming to me. Uh, number one, you guys are drastically wrong about what men prefer in women. And then the other thing is that it's scary that you guys all think that prioritizing a career is more important than prioritizing a family. And I'll tell you why before you guys call me an asshole or a jerk. <laughs> Misogyny. A woman has a certain amount of time to capitalize on the value she's given, right? If I give you a million dollars at 18 years old, right? And you're not able to multiply that money by the time you're 30. Are you stupid? Yes. Would you say yeah. yes? Yeah. If I give you a million dollars at 18, you're 18. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Here's a million dollars. If in 10 years you have nothing left to your name, you would be considered stupid. But if you're able to multiply it, invest it correctly in that time period, you'd be intelligent, right? Mm -hmm. I look at women and finding a man in that same regard because you have a finite amount of time to find the man that you want. Now, one of you said earlier, hey, I could find a man whenever, which is true. That's absolutely true. However, is the man that you want going to want you back when you're ready to settle? And I think that's the question mm -hmm. that women don't ask themselves. Mm -hmm. The man that you want, ask yourself, describe the man that you want. Probably over six feet tall, six figures a year, attractive, charming, charismatic, able to dress well, in shape, goes to the gym. Congratulations. Loyal, that guy is less than 1% like of the smart, population. Kind, smart, smart kind, cool. loyal, gentle. Cool, fantastic. You just brought it down even more. That's less than 1% of the male population. No, yeah, yeah. for sure. That's So think about it. If he's less than 1% of the male population, and there's a bunch of beautiful girls that are turning 18 every day that will follow his lead, mm -hmm. won't give him a headache. Who do you think he's going to go with? No, oh, yeah. Younger women. I, I agree with you. It makes it makes sense. Um, it makes sense. I, I tried. Mm -hmm. I, I gave it a go. And, Same. and you know, I, I tried my best. So with my two daughters, of course, I want them to be in love and, and start a family. And, you know, I look forward to those days. But. I want to make sure that they, if something does happen, they have a career to fall back on. They have their own bank account and that, you know, I've been in a situation that was abusive and mm -hmm. it took me a while to get out of it. And I, it, I was very scared and I, you know, but would so, it be fair to say that if, if we're going to tell young women that they need to prioritize their career, et cetera, that mm -hmm. we also need to tell them the negative side that if you pursue your career and chase this mm -hmm. dream, another dream is probably going to end for you. Because, Absolutely. And because we tell women that they can have it all, they can go ahead and chase a career and make money and become mm -hmm. successful. What we don't tell them is dark side of that. There's a high likelihood that you're not going to find the man of your dreams if you have the career of your dreams. Yeah. Because men don't care about experience. Men mm -hmm. don't care about competency. You said it earlier. Mm -hmm. We want a girl that's unused and hasn't been around the world. Think about it right now. Earlier, <laughs> I set them up in the trap. <laughs> earlier, I asked you. You triggered my trap card. If your daughter... It's, it's, excuse me, if your son was Logan Paul mm -hmm. and he was dating that woman mm -hmm. and all these pictures were on the internet of her with other men, that sounds to me like experience. That sounds to me like independence. But none of you signed off on her really with her actions. Uh, so on one end, you guys are saying, no, women should go out, go out there and get experience, be independent and date people and have fun, etc. Mm -hmm. But on the other end, when I tell you your son is going to be on the receiving end of that woman, you guys say, fuck no. Well, it honest, obviously I, means like you have to think about like the choice of like your decisions, your actions throughout life, that's on you. You have a head over your shoulders. You don't. That's going to obviously lead with you to your future as well as your past leads with you now. You always and, have to mm -hmm, think about yeah. what you're doing. I yeah, but, 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 a, but what you don't understand is that a woman's past will absolutely tarnish her ability to find a man in the future. What kind of past? Any, well, Anything promiscuous, in being, being promiscuous, yeah, having a lot of uh, male partners, etc. This woman probably didn't even fuck all these guys, but the image is there, which is bad enough. Because so, perception is reality. But she like, found the guy she wants. Like she fucked it, yeah. all these dudes, yes. so it like it lowers her value tremendously. I mean, hold on, it was but enough got to make all of you wants. say she's a disqualified candidate for did, your son. I didn't yeah. say yeah. disqualified. I I I went. I Sit said, down and talk to her. Yeah, we, talk to her. Yeah, I made yeah. you have questions. I but if she's aligned in her life at the point where she's with my son and she's gonna and she's gonna um you know be in a different place in her life i just think it's different and it's all circumstantial does a tiger ever yeah. change his stripes 
Rawr. <laughs> Very few tigers change their stripes, but some people are living a good ass time and then they grow mm-hmm. up. You know? But some then they lose. So she didn't right? lose. She got like the dude. Right? Right? Oh, yeah. That doesn't mean he's gonna keep her though. It, it comes back to <laughs> no it comes, it comes back anybody. to the situation I gave before. <laughs> like men value women that are inexperienced, women that are impressionable, women that can be molded, women that want to follow their lead because men are expected to be leaders. If I am responsible for a platoon of soldiers, right? I want soldiers that are going to follow my lead. Hey, we need to go this, do this. I need you to do that. They don't want no talk back or whatever, because if they don't, the mission doesn't get accomplished. People can die. There are serious consequences. A relationship with a man is very similar. So men in general want women that are going to comply and follow their directions because life already is hard enough for us. It's very difficult out there. So the last thing you want is a combative, rambunctious woman that's assertive and dominant because she wears her work at home and she's made a career for herself and earns a lot of money. She, you don't have to tell her. You can't tell yeah. her shit. That's very annoying. And I would argue, right, because a lot of our friends are higher net worth individuals, et cetera. Guys like us don't really care about women's careers and, and income. Granted, we're not saying you can't work, you can't work a job. Not we're just right. saying when it comes to the choice of having a family, what's more important to you? And at the same time, finding a man that's going to be a leader for you isn't easy, isn't easy either. But mm-hmm. when you do find that man, would you give up your career for that man? Yeah, I, I think oh, yeah. I think we can tell women to go and chase a career. I'm never against women going and making money and chasing a career, yeah. but I don't like that we don't tell young women that that comes with consequences. How do you feel about traditional yeah. roles in this generation, though? Because I feel like it's not always how it used to be. It right. should be, right? Mm-hmm. But men are so feminized, like I'd said on the last podcast, yeah. and I just think things are changing now where women feel they need to take on that dominant role for security purposes almost. But a lot of it's out of necessity too because we've been in abusive relationships and we got financially fucked over and had to start from scratch. Yes. Rebuild everything. Well, to, and to be kids, fair, hold on. chose that relationship. Definitely. And that's why I exited it with nothing and rebuilt because I made that choice. So, yeah. yeah. Wait, so the, so the guy... Wait, did he get alimony from you or the other way around? We did no alimony either way. No child support, no nothing. Um, Very, very... Small child support. Okay, so he paid you child support, but not as much as Wait, you. He paid you, or you pay him? No, he pays me. Okay, all right. I mean, as I he should. I have the children. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, we we, under, children, we understand know. that, but <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that the divorce probably messed him up too. Like, I mean, divorce typically cripples men. Unless you know what? Yes, you're right. I would like to add to her point though, um, because why? Like, um, I exited my relationship. Is that yeah. we have three um, divorce women on the panel? That's crazy. Is, is that, that my... she's in the military? So I get it. Yeah, I married. I married. You married at eighteen? <laughs> no, I was. Um, we got together when I was like what nineteen? Like, yeah. was he military too? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Out the barracks. Um, but uh, one of the, the the reason I left is that he got complacent. Um, oh, okay. Very complacent. It was very off putting. Um, you know, he was no longer the leader. He was no longer willing to lead. And, you know, I gave him, you know, you know, two years to, you know, work on his shit. And then um, it just got yeah. to the point where, like, I was almost being masculinized because, you know, I would have to be doing everything. And I just got it just got to the point where, like, I no longer wanted to go home. Like, I would spend extra time at work or at the gym. And uh, just because coming home and it was just annoying and naggy and I just didn't want to put up with it anymore. Yeah. So and, did he change or was he always that person you think? Um, he was not the same person I married now. Um he, when we first got together, he was very much a leader, you know, very um, you know, masculine per se, very strong, very dominant. Um, and then as I grew my business, because I, I also run a childcare service as well, uh, as I grew into my business and whatnot, which I did for us, you know, because mm. you know, a big the thing about soldiers is that you know they struggle with finances so my goal yeah. was i wanted to create this business so he could become the best soldier he could be um and not have to worry about home but then it got to the point where like i took care of him like too well and then he got complacent and thought he wouldn't have to lead anymore or you know uh you know be a, a prominent partner in a relationship and I, I he just didn't understand and like he's not a bad person for it but like no matter how like independent i become like i always want to be you know taken care of and provided for and like you know, and to feel like there's a leader in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I've said before, like, you know, a lot of my friends know I I repeat the phrase complacency kills and complacency did kill and it killed our relationship. Mm. And that's why I left. Like there was no, there was no like, you know, hard feelings. Like I let him have our house. I think, I think Um, that's why important. Like when you, when you got with your guy, were you guys close in age? Yes. When you got with your guy, when you, how much older was he than you? Way too old. Way much older. And he didn't have his financial stuff together? No, he did. Oh, he did. Did I say he didn't? 
Uh, no, I mean the way you you said it, like, hey, they left you like financially broke or whatever, like that. That is, came off as like he didn't. Yeah, that's what happened. But he had his shit together, perfectly well together. Sugar daddy. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I, I wish. <laughs> Jeez, so, yeah, but, like, how long were y'all married? Um, not long enough for me to get fifty percent of our stuff. <laughs> it, so, where okay. I where well, I'm like, based, like there's a year, a year uh, two and two and a half or so. Yeah, two and a half. Mm-hmm. Nigga set him out. <laughs> but she initiated. Yeah, so I did. Kind of it like, was my choice. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna stay for fifty percent. I don't give a fuck about fifty percent. No, I, I, okay, so it was just that bad. Yeah, and I don't give a fuck about fifty percent. I just don't. Even if it weren't that bad, once I've made the choice, I've made the choice. I'm not gonna waste my yeah. time or anybody else's time. Was he uh, abusive? You said. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, what, what made you say like this was this is it? I'm out. Like, was he just like, I don't know. What, what, what do you do? Um, kids, kids, kids. That's oh his kids, fact. my kids. Oh, you're oh, you're, yeah. he was the biological dad. He was. Our children made yeah. me say, "Oh, this is not okay. This this is gonna fuck up everybody, not just me." <laughs> you know. Did he give you a one piece, two piece, or three piece combo? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious. Oh, like, oh, was, no. Was like, like, no. Like, no. Uh, you said it was you know abusive. Mm-hmm. There were some abusive moments. Emotional. Like, emotional. Like, oh like my you, goodness. Like you, like you, like you gotta. Yeah, we're trying to figure it out. Here. I'm in a sticky territory with how I can discuss this, so I'm, well, I'm treading so lightly. I'm, I'm sure we will be for a long time. Holy. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. Well, sorry. Go ahead. No. Um, I. It was. It was not a great relationship. It was very wild and tumultuous. But the kids definitely become a factor. You know, if you haven't gained the strength for yourself, that is a factor for you. So. I mean, chat saying she's lying, but. <laughs> hey, I'm well, just reading the chat. I'm lying about what? I don't know. The, the chat saying you're lying, but I mean, part? we gotta hear. We, I mean, you never know unless you hear both. You know, they always say both there's sides. a both oh, sides no, of the yeah, story. Yeah, there's always two sides. Because I'm sure yeah. he could probably get on and say, "Well, she yeah. did this and oh, that." Absolutely, and she was going to clubs and shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what? We should call them. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah no. Hey, man. That's what you probably got a lot to say. Uh, Let's talk yeah, about your story real quick. So, y'all were married for like two years. And, and, and how many kids y'all got? Two. Two. How old are the kids? Seven and nine. Okay. So you had the kids, I'm guessing, this was like in your 20s? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Does having kids make it harder to date, you think, now? Oh, like, absolutely. seriously date? For sure. Mm-hmm. It's a big factor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's why, that's a big reason I'm single. And I have a career. So I have a lot of factors that make me not appealing to the general male population. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess you know. And I'm 34. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I'm just... perfectly aware of what it is. It's also yeah. like I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. you get to a point in your life where you're like, I don't care if I get the man or not. I want to be happy, whether that ends up with a man or not. Mm. You know? Okay. So. Okay. Okay. But wouldn't it be fair to say because you're because you think because you said when I asked you like, hey, what do you think is a woman's peak? You said like mid 30s um, or older, 30s to 40. Yeah. I think you said sorry, 30s to 40s. What was what it was? Yeah. Like. Um, it seems like your answer shows a little bit different that you know that like younger women have uh, a better chance. Would it be fair to say that we should like tell younger women, hey, pursue a family while you're young and attractive and be- get the best guy that you can. Vet them, obviously, for a bit before you guys get married um, and ensure that you get certain things in your name or whatever it may be and set yourself up for success and get the best guy that you can versus, hey, chase a career and then find a guy in your mid-30s. It's tough. It's hard. Um because you can find a guy in your 30s, but are they optimal candidates? Let's be I, honest, you probably for, reject, what, 99% of the guys that talk to you? Nobody ever tries to talk to me, but if they did, oh, I would reject them. <laughs> so, yeah, so even if they tried, they would get rejected. So it's like, she don't see him. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, you know, it's, it, 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 isn't it tough? Like, because you're, here's the thing that I've noticed with older women. They make more money, right? As they make more money, they acquire status. As they acquire more status, they have higher standards. As they have higher standards... The, the man pool. needs to go ahead. Yeah, the pool comes this down alongside is, it. Yeah. And then on top of that, the scariest part for y'all is the man that you want, that you think you deserve because you make this much money. Doesn't, doesn't want you back. Yeah, no, it's absolutely. Yeah. No, you're, com- you're yeah. completely accurate. It just doesn't change anything. The fact that you're accurate. We're still going to do what we do, you know? Still going to pursue that career and hope for the fucking best. I mean, so, shit. What if, what if, hmm. okay, so let's go into like a bizarro dream world, right? What if, <laughs> what if men, right, just started saying, you know what, dude? kind of just want to do what the fuck i want to do yeah i think they do that i'm gonna start playing video games <laughs> yeah i'm gonna start eating cheetos yeah 
I'm going to start watching porn and chilling and everything else like that. Drink a Sprite. These Can you say something that they don't you do? Can <laughs> they can do their own thing, yeah. right? Which mm-hmm. you guys might have been on the bad end of this on, in his relationship with mm-hmm. two, right? What kind of society do, do you think that kind of will lead us to? Where one gender doesn't care about performing to attract the other gender. Absolute failure. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. why is it that? It's in, our, it's in our nature to perform, to peacock for each other. It's just natural. Yeah, yeah but, you know? but, they, but I, I would argue women are peacocking in the incorrect way. Women Fair are, enough. Women are peacocking through masculine endeavors like chasing a career and making money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Versus, and, and, and guys are, I mean, guys aren't even, a lot of guys aren't even peacocking. So my thing is like, you got these women, right? That you got guys that are sitting here like, not doing the work, etc. They're made fun of, rightfully so. We make fun of guys that watch porn and fat and losers. Mm-hmm. But we don't make fun of women that aren't willing to put in the work to get guys. We make fun of the guys, but we don't make fun of the women. We champion the women and tell them, yeah, go chase a career. Fuck what men want. Even though you know that they want younger, attractive women that aren't promiscuous, that have traditional values. Fuck that. We're going to chase our career. We're going to be empowered. We're going to do what we want to do. Wouldn't it be fair to say that you kind of lost the right to, be, like, demand a certain man if you're not going to follow what that man wants back in return because if we switch the roles you would never accept the guy that eats cheetos and watches the porn all day it should be equal. yeah I, I don't think the two of them can be, are necessarily like mutually exclusive right yeah you know I, I do believe that you know you can you know be in a like you know women can you know uh, run a business or do whatever and still have a, a strong man as the head like it's all about mm-hmm. you know um Energy balance. Um, yeah, balance. Uh, the mm-hmm. the balance between the two of them. Yeah. So I don't think that it's necessarily mutually exclusive. Um, again, it's just I really think it depends on the person. You yeah, but yeah. career oriented women tend to have certain characteristics. Yes, if it's candid, that, you know, if if you, I, I think if you prioritize <laughs> your career more over, you know, uh, finding a family or settling down, I think then you are less attractive, um, you know, to a man potentially. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that you can't. We, we talk all the time about like a woman can have a career and still have a family and everything, but like the most successful women just aren't going to settle. Like if you look at millionaires, if you look at people that are wildly successful, it's not a mistake that they all have the same mindsets and traits, less agreeable, you know, competitive, hyper-dominant masculine fe- features. Like men just don't like these things. So it's like, for, uh, I don't know. I think we just need to educate women more because it's alarming the answers that you guys gave. Like all the answers you guys gave were like a thousand percent wrong. But I think deep down, y'all know that they're wrong, but you've been indoctrinated by feminism in modern day society to say what I want matters more than what men want and men should accept me how I come. But I think that's a ludicrous concept yeah. because if I watched porn and did whatever I wanted, women would never accept me the way that I come. I have to improve and become the man that a woman wants, right? I have to earn the, the privilege for women to be attracted to me. But women don't feel like they have to earn the privilege for a man to be attracted to them. Because all of our lives, we've walked out the door and men have done all kinds of things to show us that we don't have to do shit. And that they are just perfectly Fair. happy to Fair just, assessment. you know, I mean, 100%. I think one is going to come up with you. Right. That wants to That's why I came out of the book, Why Women Deserve Less. Uh, now, now you'll see the title. I but think sorry, that, um, to branch off of your, your point, I think that, like, in a, in a relationship, like, why it's, like, so important um, to give respect. Like, I think in a relationship, like, the man wants respect and the woman, want, the woman wants love. You know, she wants to feel loved and mm-hmm. nurtured and protected and cared for. And then the man wants respect, respect as a leader, the man of the household, et cetera. Yeah. So like naturally she's going to have to, you know, change her way somewhat to, you know, for lack of a better word, conform or submit to. But the problem the man is that, that women don't want under. to conform or submit. That's the thing. Like, that's not true. A lot of women shit. don't want to. But see, here's the oh, thing, though. Yeah. It takes the yeah. right man. The right it man. takes yeah. the yeah. right yeah. man. Yeah. 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 So, so, so you're, so you're saying in, in, in a nutshell, let's yeah. say there's a room full of guys, right? Yeah. And I would say, like, maybe like two of them are top options for you, right? They're mm-hmm. actually the guy you want to be with. But there's 10 guys there. You're going to act a certain way in front of all 10 guys and then turn off the other two. Exactly. So just you being masculine in that environment, yeah. you know what? She's hot, but she's a bitch. So I don't want to talk to her. I, I think the other thing, too, that's interesting is that, like, women will say, oh, I'm going to submit to the right man. That's a ludicrous concept. Like, what if I just, you know what? How about this? I'm going to wear heels all week. And when I find a feminine woman, I'm going to wear shoes. What <laughs> well, that that's mean? not really think, submitting. Though. I really no, think no, that but there's that, a that's balance, my point. Like, like, I'm acting feminine until I find uh, until I find a feminine woman. And then I'm going to act masculine. Like, in other words, I'm picking and choosing. But it's like a a guard. It's it's like a guard. Not every woman is just going to be submissive. Because men are going to call that throwing themselves at a woman. Hold on, that's that's not true. You're from. You're from. uh, You have you ever been to Russia? I have. Okay, you've been in Eastern Europe. No. Okay, well, Russia is kind of Eastern Europe. Okay, like just Russia, like nowhere else. Okay, 
like that's not true. When you go to other parts of the world, the women are a lot more naturally submissive. Like yes. off rip yeah versus in the united mm-hmm. states like mm-hmm. yeah they might have a guard up but it's not to the same degree here in in america so like women are more naturally feminine in other places so it's not necessarily oh it's my guard it's just in a, a westernized female mindset to just be masculine at all times and then when the right guy comes along but what i'm arguing is that the right guy might not come along because you're pur- you're purporting yourself to be yeah. a masculine female from the rip mm. like if i walked around it's in a dress rip. all the time would a girl even give me the chance to see my masculine side? <laughs> like, like, like honestly, think of, like really, I want you guys because I'm just taking your logic and spinning it the other way around, so, so you can see what I mean here. If I walked around in a dress and act like a female most of the time, and then I came across the right girl, would y'all even give me a chance? You would. Hey, y'all. Like, what the fuck is this guy gay? <laughs> so why the hell would a man give you a chance that's masculine, dominant, and successful when you give off masculine tendencies? Yeah, he's I gonna, think- he's gonna, you know, what he's gonna do. So like, you know what? Damn, this girl's annoying. I'll fuck her, but I'm never gonna wipe mm. this girl up. Hundred percent. And you mentioned pick off earlier, right? I was gonna say, can we give off so, non-masculine tendencies, but also be career oriented? Yeah, exactly. That's so, yeah. There's, there's a really, there's there's a beautiful, beautiful balance. balance that you can so do that. goes yeah. both ways, right? Yeah. Yes. But again, it's kind of like you want to find a man that's your dream man, but your whole demeanor, your whole energy is giving. I'm a boss, babe. Here's mm-hmm. my career. Mm-hmm. I'm leading with this. He doesn't want yeah. that. So he's gonna tell you what you want to hear to smash it in, like you said earlier, mm. just dip. Versus if you're actually feminine, damn, she's irreplaceable, as value, and feminine. I'm gonna get a shot, see where it goes. But is she happy and does she care at that point what you think? Because is she happy? She has to be happy to care what you think. I agree, but once again, if you really want yeah. that man, why act? To want to the man, you want? have to be happy. Happiness yeah. is the very first step of anything because everybody is a human, man and woman. We're all human. So we all have to, we share enough of the same qualities or it's like we we can be masculine. We can be I think, feminine I think without his going point, to extremes. I think his point is that like men initially are attracted to your femininity as opposed to your happiness. Sure. Like, Fair enough, you know, but and, true. Like, and to branch off of your point and, and trying to like tie into what I think you were saying is that um, like for instance, like I know you said, uh, Myron, that, um, you know, a lot of uh, business oriented females and correct me if I'm, you know, uh, not recapping this correctly, um, you know, who have, you know, strong business backgrounds or whatever may not be as attractive to men per se. Um, uh, And then from what she said that, you know, you can have, you know, a a less feminine front or feminine front on one side and then, you know, a less, you know, a masculine front or whatever. Um. I think it's just I think what she's saying is that you can, you know, present yourself as feminine and then, you know, for someone like you're interested in or for the right man, you know, you can, you know, submit to, uh, you know, conform take the guard to down his, a little. Yeah, yeah. take the guard yeah. down a little like for this. Like, but it's always going to rear its ugly head at inopportune times. Like this is what I'm trying to say. Like, see, like it's easy for you to put the mask on when we're on our first date. It's easy for you to have the mask on when we're going on maybe a two-day trip or whatever. Honeymoon phase. Your chat, those bad habits, those bad tendencies are going to rear their ugly head as soon as there's an agree- a disagreement, an argument. Maybe some situation occurs where we didn't expect it. Like, that masculine energy is going to come out at some point because it's within you. It's who you are. It's a part of your personality. You're an A-type personality. You can't turn it off. You just can't. So do so- you think you have to, like, choose, like, one or the other? Like because you literally in, in their other, it's Look, no other it, sense. This is how it goes. You're choosing one. If or you the want other. a man that's hyper masculine and dominant, the guy that you want that can tell you shut up and is attractive and is gonna handle all the bills, etc., he's not gonna tolerate a woman that tries to question him. Period. Shut that's up, not how bitch. this goes. I don't go and, and I am gonna be honest with y'all. I tell my significant others, right? My ladies, right? I don't I don't all negotiate them, right? with y'all. I don't I don't have discussions with my girls. This is what the fuck it is, period. I'm not gonna argue with you. This is what it is, and they respect me for it, and they're attracted to it. I don't negotiate with women, period, because I don't think women are on the same level as men when it comes to decision making skills, when it comes to rationality, when it comes to an ability to assess the real world for what the fuck it really is. Because men live a vastly different reality than women do, right? Are there some women that are aware of it to some degree? Yes, maybe women in the military, right? That might be aware of the brutality and the savageness of the real world. But in general, mm-hmm. a lot of women are coddled from real world situations, yeah. okay, to a degree. And I'm talking about the real world where being uh, uh, the threat of violence is very real from random people, et cetera. And for all the women out there, oh, no, women are victims of violence, too. Men are three, like five times as likely to be victims of, of violence than women are. But my, I say all that to say this. Men and women aren't equal, and women respect men that acknowledge this uncomfortable biological fact. You don't want to equal. None of y'all do. All of you said you want a leader. Ta-da, done. That means you do not want to equal. 